let's explore the concept of internal energy. In order to illustrate what internal energy is, let's consider a glass of water. The water in the glass will be our system, and the glass will be the boundary between the system and the surroundings. We talk about the internal energy because we're only going to consider the energy in the water. So, for instance, if I move the entire glass of water, the kinetic energy associated with that movement is not going to be part of the internal energy of the system. Likewise, the potential energy that exists because of forces, external forces acting on our glass of water, such as the force of gravity, are not going to be considered as part of the internal energy of our system. So what is part of the internal energy of the system? To see what the internal energy is, we're going to have to go down to the level of atoms and molecules. So let's look at a little piece of water. So just a little <coughs> bit here, and let's blow that up so that we can look at it at the level of the atoms and molecules. When we do this, we can see that the water molecules that make up our glass of water are all moving. And they are also all connected by intermolecular forces, in this case hydrogen bonds. It's the kinetic energy associated with that movement and the potential energy associated with the interactions that are going to make up the internal energy of our system. Let's look a little bit more closely at the movement of the water molecules. The first type of motion we'll consider is the motion of electrons. The electrons will most often exist in their ground state configuration, shown here, but given enough energy can be excited into the um, excited state configuration, shown here. That movement of electrons requires energy. The electrons in this configuration, in the ground state configuration, have a certain amount of energy which contributes to the total energy of that water molecule. The second type of motion we'll consider is vibrational motion. Molecules can vibrate by stretching their bonds, so in this asymmetric and symmetric stretch, and by changing the angle between atoms, such as that bend. This vibrational energy contains both potential and kinetic energy and contributes to the overall energy of the water molecule. The third type of energy or motion of the water molecule is its rotations. The water molecule can rotate about its axes, and there are three axes about which the water molecule can rotate, giving it three different rotations. Finally, the water molecule can translate. In other words, the entire center of mass can move in the container. That also contributes kinetic energy to the total energy of a water molecule. If we add up the electronic, vibrational, rotational, <laughs> translational energy of each water molecule and add in the energy of interactions between water molecules, we will arrive at the internal energy of our cup of water.